Hello language and culture enthusiast, welcome or welcome back to Multicultural Lingo. I'm your host and it's time for you to learn something about me. As you might have guessed, this isn't my real voice. Of course, I write all the texts and scripts for my videos, but I don't record them because I have a thick accent when I speak English. An Italian one. Yes, Italian is my native language. I'm also fluent in English, at least written in Russian, and I speak some French. However, over the years, I've embarked on a long journey to learn first Mandarin Chinese and then also Japanese and Korean. I still have a long way to go, but today I decided to share my insights, give you some advice, and why not? help you understand which of these languages is the hardest to learn. So, Chinese, Japanese, or Korean? Probably it depends on you more than on the language itself. Let's get started. Now, the Foreign Service Institute ranks languages based on their difficulty for native English speakers. The FSI ranking tells you approximately what amount of time it takes to reach professional working proficiency in terms of weeks. You can find a link to the ranking in the description. As you can see, the FSI ranking system is a scale from 1 to 5, with level 1 being the easiest languages and 5 the most challenging ones. My very own Italian is level 1 and Russian is level 4. Chinese, Japanese, and Korean all fall into level 5. Yes, you heard it right. These languages are considered among the most challenging for native English speakers to grasp. And I can assure you that the same applies if your native language is a Romance or Slavic one. But don't let this intimidate you. Now let's break it down and compare these languages in terms of grammar, vocabulary, pronunciation, and writing system. And stick with me, because at the end of each chapter you will find my personal ranking. So grammar is the backbone of any language, and it's where we see the first major differences between Chinese, Japanese, and Korean. Let's start with the easy one. Due to its lack of verb conjugations and tenses, Chinese grammar is considered to be one of the simplest, a breath of fresh air. There are no plurals, no subject-verb agreement, and verbs don't change with time. For instance, I go, I went, and I will go are all expressed the same way. In my opinion, the hardest aspects of Chinese grammar are the particles used to indicate the tense and aspect of an action, which are very tricky. And yes, measure words. Virtually any object needs one, and it changes depending on its shape or form. It's basically impossible to memorize them all. Well, Japanese and Korean grammars are a whole different story. They share many similarities and are much more complex. Verbs are conjugated based not only on tense and mood, but also on even the level of politeness or formality. In Japanese and Korean, the verb is mostly at the end of a sentence, which is different from the subject-verb-object structure used in English and Chinese. In addition, both Japanese and Korean employ a system of particles that attach to the end of words to indicate their role in the sentence. These can be a challenge to master, as they don't have a direct equivalent in many other languages. Between the two, I think that Japanese grammar is a bit easier, because they usually use the present tense form to refer to future events, and Korean conjugation rules are way more complicated. But there's more. Both languages are known for their heavy focus on formality and honorific speech. In Korean, you express different levels of formality by conjugating verbs into different forms and you must master at least four formality levels to speak modern Korean. This means that the way you speak must change depending on your relationship with the person you're talking to and their age. Japanese language has fewer speech levels and they are easier to express adding mostly these to nouns and adjectives or mas to verbs on the other hand, Japanese honorific speech is a bit more complex than the Korean one because it has many more words and expressions that should be used to show respect. In conclusion, it's a tie. In terms of grammar complexity, Japanese and Korean pose more challenges for learners compared to Mandarin Chinese. Now let's move on to vocabulary, which is another vital component of language. Each of these three languages has its unique set of words, shaped by history, culture, and also societal changes. However, many Japanese and Korean words originated from the Chinese language, and some of them are still pronounced in a similar way. For example, the word for furniture in Chinese is 家具. In Japanese, it's 家具. And in Korean, it's 家具. Can you hear it, right? Both Japanese and Korean have a lot of loan words, especially from English, which make these words much easier to remember and even to guess. On the other hand, except for such words as pizza, chocolate, and coffee, there are no loan words in Chinese, doubling the vocabulary you must memorize. For example, the word for wine in Japanese is wine, in Korean is wine, and in Mandarin Chinese is 葡萄酒, which means grape alcohol. The word for ice cream in Japanese is 
Ice cream. In Korean, it's ice cream. But in Chinese, it's Bing qi lin. So you got it. I can confirm that Chinese vocabulary is harder to learn, while Japanese and Korean are somewhat on the same, easier level. Okay, it's time to discuss the writing systems of these three languages. In Korea, we find the Hangul script, an alphabet system that is surprisingly straightforward and quite easy to learn. Hangul consists of consonants and vowels that form syllable blocks. Looking at each Korean word, you will know how to pronounce it correctly even without knowing its meaning. Japanese writing is a mix of traditional Chinese characters, known as kanji, and two syllabaries, hiragana and katakana. Hiragana is used for Japanese and grammar words, while katakana is used only to write foreign words like those we've just seen. Now hiragana and katakana are phonetic symbols, each representing one sound. You can study the charts and learn how to pronounce each symbol. On the other hand, kanji are ideograms, each standing for a certain meaning. You must know their meaning and how to pronounce them. What's more interesting is that one kanji can have different pronunciations depending on the context it's used in, so yes, it's very confusing. If you want to find out more about this phenomenon, watch the video that appears in the right upper corner. Finally, Chinese utilizes characters, each representing a word or concept. This system, while visually expressive and beautiful, is challenging due to the sheer number of characters to learn. If you don't know a character in Chinese, you won't be able to pronounce it. Memorizing Chinese characters in Japanese kanji is a real nightmare. Basically, you have to write down pages and pages of words. However, you can learn the Korean alphabet and Japanese hiragana and katakana in about a few weeks. So, yes, here Chinese is the hardest one, followed by Japanese. Finally, let's tackle pronunciation which is often what makes or breaks your language learning journey, at least for me. Chinese is a tonal language, meaning the pitch of a syllable changes the meaning of a word. Mandarin has four tones, and a classic example is the word ma. Ma, 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 ma. Which can mean mother, hemp, horse, or scold, depending on the tone used. To be completely honest, to me, mastering the Chinese tones is one of the hardest things in the world. Maybe because my native language is a melodic one, I can't really reprogram my brain and follow the tones to express a meaning instead of an emotion. In contrast, Japanese is a language rich in vowel sounds, with five basic vowels that can be short or long, and sometimes you must drop while pronouncing a word. The pronunciation is relatively straightforward, with each syllable given equal time. This rhythm, often compared to a slow-paced drumbeat, gives Japanese its distinct sound, but it's not as easy as it may seem. First, long and short vowels can change the meaning of a word, so you have to say them correctly. The same goes for double consonants. However, the most challenging part of Japanese pronunciation is the pitches, which are different from the Chinese tones and can be high or low. There are a few cases where Japanese words seem to share the same pronunciation, but actually have different pitches. For example, hashi, chopsticks and hashi, bridge or ame, candy and ame, name rain. Korean, on the other hand, is known for its distinct phonemes, or units of sound. It has a series of aspirated consonants, meaning they are pronounced with a strong burst of air, which I struggle with. Also, in Korean, there are distinct sounds that are formed by the combination of two letters and mixed vowels and consonants when you put certain sounds together. Here, you don't have pitches, but a whole lot of rules to remember and apply. In my humble opinion, once again, Chinese is the hardest one in terms of pronunciation followed by Korean and then Japanese, only because Japanese has many similarities with the Italian language. So which language is harder, Chinese, Japanese, or Korean? I think that the answer depends on different factors. First, your native language. As I said, to me, Chinese tones are a real nightmare, but if you already speak Thai or Vietnamese, you won't be having any problems in mastering them. Just like I don't struggle with Japanese phonetics because it's somehow similar to the Italian one. Second, your personal strengths. If you are gifted with a good photographic memory, remembering kanji and Chinese characters may be simpler than pronouncing any Korean words. On the other hand, people with a well-organized mind could find Korean and Japanese grammar a piece of cake. Third, the more you love one country and its culture, the easier it will be for you to learn the language and the more motivated you will feel. Here is my personal ranking. For me, Chinese is the hardest one, then Korean and last Japanese, and that's a wrap. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell for more language and culture content. Have a lovely day.